Meanwhile, government officials, conservationists and environmental NGOs have all descended on Johannesburg for CITES COP17. President Jacob Zuma will open the conference at the Santon Convention Centre tomorrow. The official name is the Conference of the Parties to the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora, or CITES. CITES is a treaty between governments to protect wild animals and plants against over-exploitation through trade. South Africa was one of the first signatories to CITES in 1975. So for more on this, we're now joined by the spokesperson for the Department of Environmental Affairs, Albi Modise. Great to have you with us, Albi. Um, it's, it's so long, the, the name, uh, it, it's confusing because yes. there's COP also for climate change. Uh, this is about animals um, and, and flora and it, it's a very important conference, isn't it? It is an important conference. I mean, within the environment portfolio, we've got a uh, COP17 that w was held in South Africa a few years ago that people might, might remember, which, de which dealt with climate change issues under UNFCCC. This particular COP, which is a conference of parties, it's the 17th conference of parties, we have the fortunate uh, situation that we have to be the ones to host all COP17s. But uh, this COP17 that is hosted in South Africa now, it's the one that deals specifically with wildlife flora. Okay. Uh, fauna and flora. And, and the presidency saying it's a chance to highlight our own biodiversity as well. Will there be opportunities for South Africa to do that? Indeed. I mean, uh, our, I think our track record as a country, we are the home of the biggest rhino population in the world. We have uh, one of the submissions that we're presenting at CITES. We've been able to bring back the Cape... Uh, 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 zebra from almost the brink of extinction to a very healthy, stable number of them in the country. But also we are the third mega biodiverse country in the world, which means that we are the third country with more animals, more plants, despite the, the land mm. size that we have. So we remain home to the biggest uh, rhino population. We, we remain home to a successful track record in terms of conservation. So indeed we can use this chance to share with the world some of the things that we've done to get it right. What about the concrete jungle around the Santon <coughs> Convention Center? A lot of roadworks going on. Is, is that a, a worry? No, not really. I mean, I think we, we've done some excellent work with uh, the city of Johannesburg. Uh, they've been uh, quite a very helpful group of people to work with. The, the Santon Convention Center as well, the management. But I think South Africans are ready to welcome the delegates. And tomorrow when the president address all of us, we'll be waiting with full anticipation to hear what he would, ha he would have to say about the, the program that we should be pursuing as South Africa. Mm. But we are, as the Department of Environmental Affairs, here to ensure that the, the successes that we've recorded over the past few years, we remain on that course, uh, but also we improve working closely with our partners internationally because we realize that for us to do a good job in conservation, it requires a global action. You're right. So we have rhino, elephant, uh, sharks, uh, a, a lot of endangered mm. species. What is the South Africa's number one issue going into the CITES? Look, we, we, the issue of the, 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 the Cape Zebra that I mentioned, the Cape Wild Zebra, it's one area where we have uh, previously, I mean, there were quite only a few of them left, just under 500 or so. We've got over 5,000 now available. We, 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 the other issue is the whole issue around the people-centric element. You see, conservation, for some most people, still remains an elitist area of, of our work. And it's important at all times to bring in people in that conservation estate because historically in this country, where our national parks are sitting, people were moved out to clear that space to make way for parks. Post-1994, in tandem with the national rhythm of reconciliation and building a new country, the emerging debate was what do we do with those parks? Do we give the land back to the people or do we find a way of having what we call a co-management framework? We opted for a co-management framework, working with communities, because at the end of the day, conservation that we are all talking about is not about animals only, it's about animals and the people at the mm -hmm. ultimate end because that's where they need to derive benefits in terms of economic opportunities, ecotourism and all those related aspects. That's, that's a nice way of looking at it. W what about uh, the contentious issue of possible trade in rhino horn? I understand uh, South Africa was planning to go into this meeting saying we actually want to trade. Has government uh, given that up completely? Um, and then I think somebody else wants to, Swaziland, mm. uh, sitting on a stockpile. Look, we, we, we are proponents of what we call sustainable utilization of natural resources, which means we can continue to consume as long as we do it in a sustainable fashion. We are not opposed to trade, but when we, uh, Minister Malewa, tasked by cabinet, instituted a committee of inquiry that looked into the whole issue of possible trade or not in rhino horns. The report was tabled before cabinet, and cabinet said, we do not think that we are at this particular point ready 
to even put forward a proposal for trade because there were a number of prerequisites that had to be met. You, you, you do not use trade as a panacea to the problem. Trade comes in as part of the multiple programs that you implement. Security, but also you need to know how many rhino horns you have within your stockpile. We know how many we have in the government stockpile, but we don't know how many are sitting in the private hands. So you need to have all of that because then once you open the market, you need to know how many you're gonna put out into the market, but also who's going to be a trade partner. Uh, so as South Africa, we're not going to be putting forward any proposal for trade, owing largely to the key areas that cabinet has said we must get right before we even think about trade. Will you then oppose uh, Swaziland's uh, request to, to sell its stockpile? We, we wouldn't oppose. I mean, we don't oppose trade as South Africa. We think that trade, if it were to happen, it must happen within the confines of CITES, largely because it shouldn't threaten the continued existence of the species. Our program is in line with the CITES program. We're saying trade must happen, but it must happen within the ambit and the controlled ambit of, of, of CITES. But also another factor is that, f you know, we, we, our work and our program takes its cue from our scientific authorities. In South Africa, we've got SENBI, which would on a constant basis say to you, this is the number of lions you have in the wild. Can you continue to hunt or not? And if the scientists are saying to us you cannot, then we will not do that. Mm. So all our policy interventions are informed by science. So at all times, the whole issue of science and policy interface is what is at the heart of our policy, of our proposals whenever we go to meetings uh, like CITES. Uh, last issue on, on the rhino horn, as I understand it, there, there was one argument that you can sell those horns, mm. uh, get money in to protect <coughs> the animals, beef up security. Yes, yes. On the other hand, uh, some uh, people say you actually create demand mm. by uh, supplying and you will uh, create a huge demand in Asia mm. by doing that. So, so you're saying we're not actually taking a, a stance on that second argument. We're, we're just waiting and we may consider trading in the future. Look, we, 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 en we engaged that process. We, the Committee of Inquiry that was tasked by Cabinet to look into the matter went out, engaged widely with the pro-trade, the anti-trade lobby groups. And I must say both of them presented very compelling arguments and they gave out very strong arguments as to why they think theirs is the best position to take. Uh, and, and there are those who say that by not opening the trade, we are leaving the market to the syndicates who are beginning to dictate and determine the mm. price, that we need to intervene by selling. But we, we're saying at this point, we don't think we're ready to sell. Because for us, as I said, you know, trade is not a punisher to the problem. Trade must be seen within the broad uh, ambit of the integrated strategic management approach of how we manage the rhino population in South Africa. But also we do that within the global arena because remember, the challenge of poaching as we experience in this country is being fueled by external markets. Mm. So it's important that at all times our interventions are interwoven into the CITES program because the demand is outside and we need to make sure that we also deal with the outside parties. Hence, we've signed MOUs with China, with Vietnam, with Mozambique, but also working collaboratively with other countries as well to nip this problem in the butt. What about um, ivory trade? Uh, apparently, Namibia, Zimbabwe want that ban lifted because they have a whole lot of, of ivory. Are we going to mm. get involved in, in that? Are we engaging with them at all? Look, we, the SADC region, we've got a very healthy uh, elephant population. Our, our elephant population has grown exponentially. Uh, so, so I'm sure when they present that particular argument, they would present the argument backed up by the science in terms of what they would do. But we from our side are not going to uh, go for any particular proposal for trade. But I'm sure when we listen to their arguments, we might be able to hear what the arguments are presented, what arg arguments are presented, mm -hmm. but also what would have propelled them to move for that particular uh, uh, proposal. So it will be a collective decision in the end. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, spokesperson for the Department of Environment Environmental Affairs, Albi Modise.